In the simplest terms, a landslide forms where the earth materials have been weakened to the point that the ground slope is unable to support itself. It is a slower form of mass movement where gravity causes earth materials to rupture, shear along planes of weakness, and slide down the slope. We're standing on an old landslide in a major city. Behind me here is a major scarp that formed in this neighborhood. And uh, we had about 25 to 30 feet of movement at the head scarp, and that's that crack you see behind us where the, the, the claystone is exposed. And the entire slope moved down enough so that several homes were severely damaged to the point where they had to be condemned and torn down. In many areas of the state, we've had pretty severe growth pressures. A lot of people want to move to Colorado, but in a lot of areas, you have these steep slopes, which uh, the claystone is very weak. A landslide begins with a simple crack at the ground surface. Uh, we call these tension cracks. And what it is is basically an indication that the ground is beginning to move. We don't know how deep it is, but those surface cracks, those tension cracks, will get wider. And eventually, they'll start offsetting. When that's happening, any structure that's on that moving ground will be displaced. But that movement can be relatively profound. It also can be quite rapid, and it can completely destroy a house. The foundation can get cracked, it can heave. You can see several feet of movements in, in a matter of just a few hours. Well, right here, we're on a, a, an old landslide scarp, and you can see the, the material exposed here is a very weak, very disturbed claystone. When this material gets very wet on, on some of these slopes here, they fail, and that's what happened here, the, the slope on this side has dropped in relation to this side and you get what's called a scarp. These are tension cracks. As this material moved away, then it slumped down, forming these, uh, the scarp that you see here. The pile of dirt you see behind me is covering an old busted foundation. The house that used to be here was completely destroyed and removed by the landslide that occurred here. For even a small landslide like this, it can be catastrophic for those homes that lie on it. What you see behind me here is the toe of a landslide that occurred in a residential area. What is particular about this toe is that it occurred where slopes are not at a 25% grade. So for most land use planning purposes, this particular slope would have been approved for development of homes. What we see here is that the toe of this landslide has pushed up the ground as much as six, seven feet and moved it down laterally six or seven feet. Any home that would have been placed at this location would have experienced anywhere from seven to eight feet of heave in addition to being moved down the slope. And there's no home that would have been able to withstand that type of displacement. Landslides can occur naturally, but many times it's due to human activity. The slope you see behind me was cut to put this road in. And when they did that, it was too steep for the conditions. I'm uh, standing at the scarp of a landslide that uh, occurred here in Colorado Springs. This landslide occurred possibly a thousand years ago, uh, but if you look at aerial photographs, you could tell it was here. Behind me, you can see a couple parallel ridges that indicated how this formed. And you can really see the toe going all the way down to the development or the community below us here. At that period of high precipitation and, and the fact that the homes were placed by cutting the, the toe of the slope out, it reactivated. We had an additional scarp forming at the top and then the toe of the landslide started pushing against this line of homes. Basically every house was damaged to the point that they had to be condemned and were removed by the city. The Colorado Geological Survey is pretty familiar with the type of problems that we see in some of these unstable and potentially unstable slopes. One of our roles at the survey is to provide land use reviews for, for counties and any municipality that wants to utilize our services. The Colorado Geological Survey has a number of publications uh, concerning landslides in Colorado. These publications are offered to the public and several of them are specific to land use planners, and geotechnical consultants. We also have a map viewer of an inventory of landslides on our website. This is a wealth of information that's available at the Colorado Geological Survey. I've been an engineering geologist with the Colorado Geological Survey for over 20 years now, and I consider this important work. If we can somehow assist local planning agencies 
and geotechnical consultants, and even the citizens, the people that own these homes, if we can help so that the kind of situation I just described, where you have houses that have been there for 30, 50 years, all of a sudden ruined and destroyed by landslides, if we can help to educate the homeowners and the agencies that plan for the future, and, and even the geotech consultants that are doing the work, if we can prevent these, this kind of activity where these homes are at risk, then I feel that we're, we're really doing a service for the, the citizens of Colorado.